Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we will be obviously talking about the snowstorm, blizzard, and some areas that will be occurring tomorrow across the Midwest. But there is so much in the long range to discuss the cold weather potential for more systems that I won't be just focusing on the system tomorrow. I will for a while, but about... Just skip forward ahead until you find me talking about the long range if you're interested in that. Um, I will be talking about a potential snowstorm in the south, across the northeast, across the midwest. I mean, a very exciting pattern uh, towards the late winter. Alright, if you guys enjoy these videos at any time, consider checking out my channel, consider subscribing. Hitting the thumbs up button also helps a ton, so if you could do that, that would be awesome. Otherwise, let's uh, let's get into this. Okay, so I have the weather radiation map pulled up from the National Weather Service, and notice that we do have a lot of winter weather advisories, a few offices that did issue winter storm warnings, and if you could see blizzard warnings. Now, a lot of people always associate winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings with heavy snow or just snow, and that is accurate to a sense. These blizzard warnings or uh, winter storm warnings are not really indicative of the heavy snow potential, but rather the winds combined with the falling snow. Now, up here in Wisconsin, the UP, the amounts will be heavy enough for a winter storm warning because of the heavy amounts. And if I were to click on, say, Green Bay, uh, the Green Bay Forecasting Office, you could see that the main uh, main advisory is for obviously the heavy snow and wintry mix. Now, obviously, blowing snow will be up uh, also there, but again, um, the snowfall amounts themselves will be high enough to issue a winter storm warning. Again, um, definitely on a lower side. You know, this isn't going to be a monster blockbuster system across uh, Wisconsin. You, you know, you could see much more snow than this, and still, um, <clears throat> you know, not consider it a huge system. Uh, but the winds will make this system pretty miserable, and also uh, how fast it will be falling. Obviously, the cold air that follows will be affecting. I mean, look at that. Almost every single piece of the country is favored below average or just being close to normal. And right there across Maine, you know, maybe not as cold, so still definitely not warm. And across the southwest, maybe a bit warmer. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Um, so that's just in general for the whole United States. But you can see Green Bay, heavier snowfall amounts, right? If you were to look at the Quad Cities, which is uh, where we have the winter storm warnings issued, Look at Davenport. These amounts right here, I'll show you in just a second, are not going to be warranted, are not going to be worthy of a winter storm warning. Two to four inches. While that's not little, you know, that will definitely still create an impact. Again, a warning usually at around uh, this latitude, um, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and areas north, is six inches plus in order to get a winter storm warning issued the reason they issued the warning this time with these lighter amounts is obviously because of the winds so you could see that total snow accumulation is two to five that is the exact criteria for a winter weather advisory but, but look uh, winds gusting 45 miles per hour flash freeze may occur especially if we get a bit of some warmer temperatures um which will be there just again how warm will they get um so again a blizzard is possible and uh, it's weird to call this a blizzard with such little amounts, but it's definitely a possibility. Um, you can see Des Moines, Iowa is not under a blizzard warning, but again, the snow, it will be enough to make it feel like a blizzard. Um, though, technically, under the, you know, correct criteria, it won't be. But um, anywhere to the north, it will be rather miserable. And again, the snow amounts with this are not too significant. Two to four, three to five, uh, you know, I mean, it's still a shovelable event. You'll probably have to plow Though it will be a bit different as the snow will be drifting. Some areas may see a foot of snow in terms of drifts. Others may uh, see quite literally nothing as that snow blows away. So we saw the map. We saw the advisories. Again, I will be um, going over this. And if you're still watching, waiting to go over the potential snowstorm across the south, I will be doing that in just a minute. Um, I say south, but honestly, the northeast has a potential. The midwest has uh, many potentials. Um, the South obviously has potentials, and uh, um, the whole entire United States, as you saw by that graphic, has potential for very cold air, which um, at this point seems like it, it could stick around for the whole month of February. So definitely um, something that is going to be noteworthy about the 2020-2021 winter. Okay, let's start taking a look at the GFS. Right now we have an area of snow across Canada and southern Canada into Manitoba, extending into North Dakota. Again, nothing too heavy because the system is pretty weak. It does have precip, a lot of rain mixing in with it because the temperatures are relatively warm and no signs of Arctic air at the United States. Chilly across the northeast after that system pulled away. Notice, out ahead of the system, a bit of warm air, so say Chicago, and northern Indiana, right? Southwestern Michigan, southern Wisconsin, and down into the southeast. And here there actually may be some pleasant temperatures. To the north, 
there may be temperatures warm enough where this could start off as a bit of rain. If you recall a few days ago, even yesterday, as I was making this video, I was saying that this rain snow line will probably trend to the south with the models. And if you recall, the models were showing at Salmi Noel into Wisconsin. And I was pretty confident that they will, you know, based on observational trends from the model forecast, um, that it will, it will trend to the south. The GFS was one of the models, which we're looking at right now, that headed to the north. You can see now it has... Um, Trying to that quite a bit uh, further to the uh, to the south, and in order, you know, enough for northern Illinois, uh, northern Indiana to stay as snow mostly still showing some mixing, which I think is overdone. In terms of timing, timing, if you were to look at Minneapolis, late today into early tomorrow is your best bet for snow. I would say two to three inches is possible. Notice Green Bay also seeing that snow. The system is producing winds at this point. And you can see they're pretty strong, but the actual low pressure is not too strong at this point. And the winds here, you'll see when they start wrapping up. Look at that. Very, very powerful winds with the help of, of the Arctic air that is rushing from a high pressure behind. These, they're kind of creating like a, a barrier or a, like a gradient of tight pressure. We have low pressure that's kind of at first almost two pieces. And look at that. Uh, the winds do shift from more of a north and east to a north and west. And, the, uh, you know, the snow spreads across much of Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa, Indiana. Um, towards Indiana, a bit more mixing, though I do think a lot of this will be a bit more snowy than shown as here. Um, you can see this is 6 p.m. It will probably start at noon for, say, Wisconsin, Illinois, shifting into Michigan and Ohio at around the later evening hours. Um, Detroit, Southern Michigan, a lot of you haven't seen a big system yet so far this winter. Um, you know, it's one of the few states that kind of has been avoided. Wisconsin hasn't seen a, you know, a giant one yet. Though Milwaukee, for example, is at least in year average in terms of total snowfall. Chicago is about, above average. Northern Indiana hasn't also seen seen anything too significant though it has uh, with that you know this past system that we had finally seen one michigan on the other hand has been kind of missed out you could see this one will drop area-wide snow and you could see the gfs shows mixing all the way into detroit again i think that's overdone uh, there may be for sure a few hours of say a uh, very heavy wet snow in, t in the sense that not necessarily rate wise but just you know almost like just a melted snowflakes falling but i don't think there will be a full transition over to rain um and we, you know, the GFS is warm biased with this, with these runs trending further to the south with that rain snow line with each run. So, um, th three to six inches is possible across Michigan. That may not seem like a lot, and it isn't really for Michigan. They have, you know, they've seen bigger events. The thing is, though, however, that um, at three to six inches, if you haven't had six inches in a while, you'll forget. You, you know, I forgot when I've got my first six inches this year, we didn't get any uh, four inch plus snowfall last year. I forgot how much 6 inches was. It's quite a bit. So uh, a lot of folks will be satisfied with that. Notice as it moves into the northeast, it weakens. The winds are still just howling off of Lake Michigan. Lake effect off into the UP. Um, the thumb, the mitten, if you will, of actual the state of, of Michigan. The kind of the lower part of Michigan. Best way to put it, right? And there's probably a name for it. I'm just a bit lost right now in terms of trying to find that. Um, Toronto, Canada. A lot of folks also seeing a bit of a rain snow mix, though definitely trending towards snow as we push further. And I mean, even if it does a rain or it's kind of a wet scenario, the the air behind this will be rather cold and quickly uh, change anything over to flurry snow showers at the end or just flash freeze things, you know, freeze things very quickly over, which is another concern. As you saw, it was mentioned in a Green Bay office that, or was a Green Bay office? I think it was one of these. Maybe I didn't show you, I don't know, but they're mentioning that flash freeze is possible where the roads are wet and then suddenly it just becomes really cold and it doesn't have time to dry up. Notice, again, the Northeast, a bit of rain right in New York City, all these locations got a lot of snow. Um, again, normally, you know, this would be a concern and you can see that the that the kind of time frame from being above 32 is not that long. And even once you do, the rain is not going to be heavy. It's going to drop, you know, a bit of rain. It's not going to be a flooding event. It definitely will melt some snow. Not all of it. Not even getting close. Um, notice the lake effect again are turned on. So a lot of Michigan, especially western Michigan, will probably get the bulk of the snow from this lake effect. I mean, warm lakes for this time of the year, near record levels. I mean, I think there's 2% ice coverage across uh, Lake Michigan right now. I'm assuming the other lakes are probably similar, Lake Superior a bit more. Um, again, lakes uh, will be turned on to the max. In terms of total snowfall from this event, I know I took a while. I wanted to go this over in detail, and I did emphasize that this is just one model run. And you can see generally heaviest towards the UP and in northeastern Wisconsin. 
as you get towards the south, definitely the amounts don't dwindle quickly. Um, five to six, I would say, all the way potentially into central Illinois, into uh, Iowa. Um, northern Indiana, Illinois, the uh, eastern Illinois, the cutoff will be a bit sharper. But again, I would say that this is a pretty good representation of anywhere from two to five inches. Again, being a more wet scenario, more mixing, more towards that two inch mark. And if it's a overproducer, you know, it's not going to be hard to see six inches, especially since... The snowfall will be falling very heavily, very rapidly, and an additional hour could, you know, result in an additional inch or two. I'll show you more detailed amounts in just a second. Okay, so I won't be going through all the models, but I will be going over the models that I think have the best handle. Um, that would be the R-Gem. Notice what it shows. I think uh, this has one of the better handles due to the fact that it's been showing this scenario for a while, meaning the last 30 hours and it hasn't remained greatly unchanged. I think it is underdoing some of these amounts across Wisconsin. Um, because this is assuming a 10 to 1 ratio, it will be colder up here. This will probably be falling at more of a 12 to 13 ratio, right? So you can multiply these uh, amounts by 1.3. To the south, you know, Illinois, Indiana, I would say that's accurate. A 10 to 1 will be falling uh, for most of the event, if not slightly lower. So uh, this is accurate. It does bring it down pretty far to the south. I, you know, this is definitely an extreme in terms of how far south that is. But, uh, you know, anywhere north of I-80 in Indiana... Uh, Illinois, Iowa, and even Ohio, I would say the chances for um, three inches plus is probably medium to high. Anywhere south, it gets a bit more tricky. And again, for more updates, just keep an eye on the radar and see what the National Weather Service has to say. This is a NAM. You can see it shows more of a snow-heavy event across portions of central Wisconsin, quickly cutting things out. This is possible. And, um, but again, I, I, you know, just even looking at that, the changes aren't amazingly huge or they're not significant. Um, if Chicago went from getting five inches to, you know, three and a half, it's going to be uh, kind of a, a more of a nuisance type of system regardless. Um, though once it gets towards that five, six inches, it, you know, it could get towards that um, concerning amount where it starts becoming more of a hazard. Okay, her model. This is a very, very high-res model. It's a high-range model. I really like it. It really did, good, did a good job with that previous system we had. Notice what it shows, similar to the NAM, but... Um, it also shows similar to what the RDPS showed further to the south. It just goes heavier with the amounts to the north, which I think is accurate. I think a lot of the UP will be getting over 8, if not over a foot near the lakes. And I notice uh, Chicago, for example, right to 4 inches. Uh, Quad Cities, 4 to 6 inches. Um, Milwaukee, 2 to 4 inch, again, uh, maybe a bit higher. Hmm, right there, it does show areas well over 6 inches. And I notice into Green Bay, some snow. Minnesota, or Minneapolis. Further south and east you go, the heavier amounts will be, and, uh, you know, there would be some, probably some 5-inch amounts towards the boot of Minnesota. The city itself, anywhere from 1 to 3, so not a huge event, but definitely something to uh, be on a watch for, as it could be a nuisance. Let's quickly take a look at the European. I think the European has done a decent job with the system. It was reluctant at first to bring the rain-snow line to the south. Notice what it does, right? It shows mainly snow north of i-80 into indianapolis it shows rain and kind of brings it pretty close to um, the michigan border but again michigan probably staying as more of a wet heavy snow throughout this whole event maybe a bit of mixing into detroit though again it shouldn't be uh too significant in terms of icing or uh, heavy amounts of sleet maybe just a bit of a cut down on the snowfall amounts and notice it really weakens as it pushes into the northeast total snowfall wise let's take a quick look at the european 10 to 1 ratio. Again, I think that's pretty accurate for the locations to the south, to the north, maybe a bit underdone. Um, notice what it shows. Green Bay, almost 6, 7 inches. M Minneapolis, 2, 3. Again, 1 to 3 is fair. Um, Chicago uh, shows anywhere from 3 to 5, right? Uh, Northern Indiana, 3 to 5. Iowa, right there as well. I do want to say that even for the northeast, you know, Pennsylvania, New you know, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, amounts of 2 to 3 inches are possible. Again, nothing compared to what you've been seeing. And also the West. Now, I do want to start tra transitioning to talk about the rest of the United States, aside from that Midwest system that is occurring right now. This is the wrap, which is another high-res. I just want to quickly show you what it shows. Generally the same again. It shows higher amounts further to the south. And notice that it actually shows uh, more snow into, say, Indianapolis, right? Maybe even to northeastern Missouri. That's another area that could pick up one to two inches. Um, Nebraska, again, the system just starts intensifying once it passes Nebraska, and a lot of this may be kind of mixed with rain, so 1 to 2 seems fair. Again, for details regarding anything here, go to um, National Weather Service or Environmental Canada if you live in Canada. Um, notice that on the Canadian side, Ontario gets decent amounts, obviously wind-whipped. 
Toronto, potentially three to four inches. Not a blockbuster, but definitely something to uh, mention. Uh, further cities along the road, again, one to three inches. It seems to be fair. Further to the north in Quebec, not too much, really. More of north of Lake Superior, kind of Thunder Bay area, could be seeing some decent, but not historic amounts of snow. Um, if you were to turn on Kuchera, you could see that it increases the snowfall amounts to the north, really, but not to the south. So in Canada, you know, way up here, up to a foot as possible of that fluffy, fluffy snow. Um, the RAP, it does a relatively good job with this, so I think that's a fair forecast. Let's start talking about the rest of the United States. Quickly, go back to surface and precip, precipitation type and rate. And let's see what this has to say. So we have that first system, right, passes through. Notice it weakens. Now we do have a lot of systems moving into the northwestern United States. Notice Montana, right, for example, Idaho, uh, western Montana, even eastern Montana, getting in on some snow. And uh, for a good while, honestly, it's uh, looking like it could just be continuous little bands of snow coming through. Few of these do make it out to the plains. You can see the European advertises a bit further to the north across Iowa. Illinois, and I say further to the north because the GFS ensembles advertise it more into central Missouri. I have a lot of people from Missouri, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Arkansas that are wanting snow. Again, this pattern looks favorable for sure for that snow. Look at that. Um, the European, again, this is just one model representation, tracks that little piece of snow. Um, it looks meager, right? It looks very tiny, but it will be cold. And from this, an easily, you know, easily one to three inches could fall because of how fluffy this will be. The water content, very low, but it will be fluffy. Now, notice, regardless, uh, that passes through. It's, you know, the lakes continue to produce a bit of that lake effect. Still a lot from this system going on. Um, some of the models, if you recall, were showing a potential system across the northeast. Um, there's a still potential for that, but you can see that the European takes it pretty far off the coast. And initially, it tried combining it with this system, which could actually dump some pretty good amounts across the west. You can see it comes down pretty moisture-saturated, moisture laying in across Idaho, Wyoming, right? But as it moves out into the plains, it's a bit less of a moisture storm. Though, you know, across that little axis where it could uh, set up easily, three to six inches could fall because of how fluffy that will be. Um, again, far out, confidence is low. You can see that system passes way far out into the ocean. The European doesn't bring it onto the coast. Um, notice that after that system passes, I mean, it doesn't stop. We start seeing a bigger system, potentially more moisture fueled into Michigan, potentially. Look, into maybe portions of northern Missouri and, right, even into central Missouri. And then uh, Kansas City would get out of that. Notice uh, more rain for the coastal areas, but more snowy for the Canadian cities. Toronto potentially getting a big event out of that. Montreal, Ottawa. And, you know, this doesn't stop. If you were to take a look at this, the European invites very cold air here at this time. But it keeps a lot of moisture to the south. And, yes, this is where some models show a big system across the south. You can see a lot of snow potentially into Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, maybe the Gulf Coast states. I, I know I do have viewers from Georgia that, want, that are wanting snow, right? And you may be getting that with this system. Uh, potentially, it's very far out. But I'm just saying that don't just... Say, oh, it's going to be like last year a heat wave. Spring is not looking to come early across the southeast this year, um, really at all. Uh, probably average, which will seem late compared to last year, or below, you know, later than average. So I showed you the European. Let me show you the version 16 GFS parallel. Yesterday, if you recall, it wasn't loading. Today it did. You could see that's what it does with the storm. Definitely a more heavy base system. On the Midwest, say even to Illinois, Indiana, right, Michigan. So three to five inches with that. Nothing too significant in terms of change. Just a bit heavier on the quantitative precip forecast. Again, very strong winds. Lake effect. We have that several storm set up across the northwest. Montana, Wyoming, uh, Colorado picking up on some decent snow. Again, um, it won't be bitter cold, but it will be snow. And you can see that it moves out into the plains. Again, if you recall, the European put it further to the north. The uh, GFS brings it further into Missouri, maybe northern Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, and it merges it with that system, which the GFS parallel has been a big advocate of a nor'easter at around the late weekend time frame. A lot of the models have moved away from that. Even the model, the GFS parallel has done it, uh, has moved away itself a bit. It still shows it, but not nearly as strong as what it used to. Notice it does bring snow out into the ocean. Again, um, that's just one chance. Don't cry over that, as you can see. Still a potential, and it did do a good job last time, the GFS parallel with the system across the Carolinas, if you recall, um, I think a week or a week and a half ago. Probably two weeks ago, I don't even recall. 
Um, yeah, close to two weeks. Um, it did a good job. So it's still something like this is definitely possible. Keep an eye on for that, especially with this cold air reaching far to the south. Notice we have a very strong system across Montana, right? Idaho moving down. It does bring snow, uh, though it looks pretty meager right into the Midwest. Still could produce some fluffy amounts of one to three. Notice, um, despite not producing a nor'easter the first time, it could, could potentially produce something right here, the Tuesday time frame, just so just a few days later, right? And look at that, it starts uh, flirting with a precip and very cold air to the south, always a bad combination. And look, an ice storm sets up, right? Transitioning into more of a potential snowstorm as it pushes into northern Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, Virginia, and up the northeast coast, though it doesn't fully evolve into a beast. Um, notice lake effect potentially onto Wisconsin and Chicago. Notice another Arctic air mass you can see indicated right there. And what we have is actually... A very powerful cold front moving through, dropping some light snow in. You can see uh, more of the Mid-Atlantic getting hit. And potentially, uh, then the pattern starts ridging. So maybe, um, you know, a break. But again, this is very far out at this point. And the GFS parallel in terms of total snowfall through, I think this only lets us go through hour 240. Um, let's put on Kuchera. That will be more accurate with the cold air. You can see, not bad. A lot of scattered snow for the south. Again, it doesn't develop a huge system with this model run. But uh, one model run ago, it showed more significant snow, right? And that has been definitely the trend with these models. You can see most of Missouri right there gets a bunch of snow. Northeast, Midwest, not so much Upper Plains, which I have been lacking on. But if you're from the Upper Plains and you're watching this, um, springtime, March, April, you guys are probably going to end up seeing a lot of snow at that during that time. I know it seems unfortunate, but um, that's usually the case. Spring storms, uh, especially with the La Nina are going to be favoring your place heavily, I think, this year. So, you know, in North Dakota, some locations have even gotten 10 inches this year. You could pick up, you know, potentially even 40 within one system. It's looking very promising for those type of storms. Um, okay, so I show you the GFS parallel. Let me show you the GFS regular. Let's go to its 18Z model run, its most recent one. Look what it shows in terms of total snowfall. Um, this is only an hour 204. Let's take a look at hour 384. It's taking a bit too long. Taking a bit of time to load because probably of how heavy these snow amounts are. All right, let's force quit that. Try loading it again. Um, if it doesn't load, then I'll just start wrapping things up. But just look at that through um, the 10-day forecast. Not even 9-day forecast. Look at how much snow it shows across the west, right? Into Montana, um, into Nebraska, uh, North Platte, Lincoln, Omaha, Des Moines, Kansas City, Chicago, Milwaukee, Green Bay, uh, Detroit, potentially, Indianapolis, maybe. Uh, Cleveland, not so much in the Northeast, but just look at that, those amounts right there. Okay, so this is not loading. Come on, let's see why this is occurring. I'll be back to you once it loads. All right, so I got it to load, and I mean, the amounts here are just ridiculous. Maybe it was uh, taking a so long time to load, uh, taking such a long time to load because of how much snow it's forecasting. Look at this. I mean, the Midwest obviously favored, but the Northeast doesn't really miss out. And look at the South, Georgia, <laughs> Atlanta, 10 inch snowstorm. It's not out of the question if you get so much cold air, which at this point it's likely. And if you just get a precip swap that sets up, you could see a system across the south. This is not, you know, this is not, uh, I would say, Lala Land. I mean, it kind of is, and people will tell you that it is. And I will tell you as well, just so for the sake of not being disappointed once you don't get it, because the chances of that occurring are much heavier. But look at this. This is Cuchero, right? The GFS tomorrow system, the little one. The potential second little one that the GFS actually turns into a big, bigger storm. Another big storm, right? And then it starts favoring the south as the cold air gets down there. And look, right there. I'm at the 200-hour mark. You know, that's not 300 hours plus. It's not 100 hours or less. It's in the almost La La Land category, right? So uh, definitely something to watch for. And just look at that. Lots of snow. Um, definitely lots of snow. So uh, mountains, I mean, everyone's getting in on this. The cold air is there. Um, plentiful snow. And again, stay tuned. We do have watches already issued for that one across Montana. So for my folks living there, cold and a lot of snow is possible. Also, I do want to mention one quick thing. Look at the frost advisories. Very, very far to the south, almost getting into the Everglades. Look at that. Um, let's just take a look at Fort Myers. Uh, frost advisories around 34 degrees and look, 36. You know, if you have citrus trees, lemon trees, orange trees, this is a nightmare, especially where... Look at that, Leesburg, Sanford, Daytona Beach, 31, 30 degrees. That's, that's rather uncalled for. So stay safe. Uh, rather, 
your plants stay safe across those locations. To the north, stay safe. Uh, everyone stay safe. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya.